We're crossing over to the UK where they have recorded 133,495 cases with a little over 18,000 deaths. And we're speaking to Denta Amwating, who's the founder of Guba, proudly Ghanaian, um, and also she is a nurse in the UK and also a frontline health worker. Good morning, sis. Thank you good for joining morning, us. Sis. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be, to be alive. You know... Um, because there's been so many uh, recent um, people that I know, um, people that are, you know, an extended family that I know that have got the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we even heard about the story of the young Ghanaian girl who was pregnant, had the baby. Yeah. Um, and also died. So it's, it's very, it's a very tough time. Mm -hmm. um, all of us. Um, and so for us to be here speaking this morning is a blessing. So we thank God for that. Now, it's even tougher being a frontline health worker. I know you're a nurse. And so you also um, have dedicated your time to helping fight the virus in the UK. Yeah. How, how bad is it? It is bad. Um, you know, the amount of deaths that's happening in the UK, we're looking at between 800 to 900 deaths a day. 800 to 900 deaths a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so for me, I'm a pediatric nurse. So mm -hmm. what's happened now with um, children's nursing is that they've had to close a lot of our, our wards mm -hmm. because one, a lot of um, parents are not bringing their children into hospitals. Mm -hmm. And so even our ward um, in London has been closed down and has been turned into a COVID-19 um, ward. Mm. So what's happened to some of the pediatric nurses is that we are now moved to do adult nursing. Um, some feel very uncomfortable about that because it's not something that we have studied. Um, and it's not something that it's some of some people's passion. You know, their passion is for children's nursing. Mm -hmm. So it's a very difficult time um, for everyone. Um, you know, there's you know, lack of PPEs in the hospitals yeah. um, and for the demand, you know, with, you know, one of the hospitals, I think Watford or Luton, they've had to close because there's no oxygen. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy time at the moment. As a nurse, what's it like coming into contact, close contact with someone who's tested positive, who's battling the virus in the hospital? Um, is, is it scary? Uh, I mean, you're talking about lack of PPEs and stuff, but just looking at the person and how they're grappling with the disease, what goes through your mind? Um, one, your, your emotions are with the person um, that, you know, they've got this COVID-19. Um, and two, you're scared that, God, you just think, I don't want to be in that position. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to be where this person is because it's real. It yeah. is so real, the pain that they go through, you know, the respiratory stuff that they go through. And it's just, you're, you're scared and you're scared that you're going to come home and you're going to pass it on to your children and your yeah. family. Um, but one thing that I do want to stress this is Ghana, we see a lot of nurses in their uniforms outside. Mm -hmm. Please, Ghanaian nurses, when you go, when you're going to work, don't put your uniform on. Because whatever trotro or taxi that you take, whatever's in there, one, you take it to work. Mm -hmm. Two, when you finish work, remove your uniform because that is a spread of infection. Mm. Okay. I don't know what you can see. I see a lot of nurses in Ghana, you know, the green uniform. Yeah, yeah. And it's not right. You're not supposed to be going out with your uniform. Because you are indirectly spreading the yes. virus. You're indirectly spreading the virus. It's so it's so important. Like us nurses here, you, you 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 don't wear your uniform to work. You wear it when you get to work. Okay. When you finish work, you take it off, put it in a plastic bag, and then come home and wash it. At this time, you need to be washing your uniform on a daily basis. No, but, but I mean, if you're in the hospital and you're wearing the overalls and everything, isn't your uniform protected from it because the virus only comes into contact with the overalls? No. So look. Anything can happen. And it's not about, it's about taking precaution. Mm. You don't know, you, sometimes, you know, we are walking, walking, um, maybe from the drug room. You don't know what can contaminate your, your, your trousers or walking through a, the patient or the curtains, mm -hmm. you know, there's different, different things that could happen. And so for you to be hundred percent sure is best that when you use a uniform, 
you take it take off. Take it away and you, yeah. you wash it and you wear a new one. How do you manage coming back home to your family after being in the hospital for a number of hours? What What is your precautionary measure like the moment you get home? Um, definitely wash your hands. Obviously, my uniform goes straight into um, the washing machine. Mm. Um, I... I, it's hard to social distance from your, from your children. Yeah. Um, but you know, we try to, you know, kind of have that distance for a couple of hours. Um, but it's difficult. I mean, you do, all you can do is just wash your hands regularly. Um, and just try your best not to be so affectionate mm -hmm. with the children. Um, as much as possible. Um, and the kids also, they know that they've got to wash their hands yeah. um, and, you know, do everything that they have to do. But it's it's a, it's a difficult thing when you've got children at home that are young and... Okay. Need to to. Looking at the fight in the UK as against the fight here in Ghana against the virus, what are some of the things you think that we could adopt, especially because I know that you are running the Stop COVID-19 campaign with a, a lot of other personalities as well. What are some of the things you've identified that you think we can fix here in Ghana? Um, so I think that um, obviously we've started the campaign to rock your mask, which I think is an is an important thing. Look, the UK and Ghana is the the, the issues are, are are a bit different. You know, in Ghana we've seen that you know there's a lot of people that feed um, it's hand to mouth. You know, mm -hmm. um, and so I think we need to do more of the social distancing campaign, more of wearing a mask and more of the washing the hands. Okay. You know, I've watched a couple of um, videos and people still don't understand why they should be washing their hands. People are just talking about they're drinking the alcohol. It's like the education mm. doesn't seem to be sinking in. So I think a lot of the community people that are in these communities, we need to champion somebody. Yeah. Somebody to be respect in the community to champion the awareness mm. so that people understand the <laughs> what happens to you when you get the coronavirus. Mm. And you, know, you don't want to get it. Definitely. Um, and so I think more education needs to be done um, in that um, respect. And I think, you know, even in the UK, we're finding that people are still going out, um, even though you think that, you know, they, they kind of know... Um, they've got a good education background, but people are still going out. When the sun comes out, people are out. Mm. Um, and people apparently went to the beaches in the UK as well and beaches in Ghana that we saw. Yeah. And so um, I think the education needs to be more. I think Definitely. With, with, with the UK, at least we, we see every day the, the deaths that are happening. I think Ghana, because the deaths are low, you know, only 10 or whatever mm. it is, People are not feeling it. People are not seeing it. I think, and even I heard uh, one of the interviews as well. It's like we're not seeing what's what's happening. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, and so they're not they're not feeling it as much as we are feeling it here. Okay. Anyway, Danta, thank you so much for speaking to us, and we wish you well. Please stay thank safe you. for us and protect your family as well. Thank you so much. But lastly, Bella, I think it's so important that now we are seeing a lot of innovation coming from our motherland. Mm. Um, we're seeing people doing PPEs, people doing masks, and I think that we need to champion and promote that. This is a time that manufacturing in our country needs to be boosted and picked up and supported. Definitely. So I think that's one thing that we need to we need to try and do. Definitely. Thank you so much, Denta Martin, MBE. She's a founder of Guba and also a frontline worker. Over to